In the last video we saw a proof which was incorrect, so in this video let's move on and look at another proof which may or may not be correct. So to signal that we're not sure if this is correct, I've again written, ah, my pen's being weird, ah, we've again written the word proof in quotation marks, so we ask the question, is this correct? We're going to determine whether this proof is logically valid. Okay, so first let's read the assumptions and conclusions. So I've actually written one of the assumptions separately from the claim. So there's there's two assumptions really. Uh, so these parts are the assumptions. So uh, assumptions are that t is a real number, which means t is in R, but t is irrational, which means t is not in the set of rationals. And then this is the conclusion. Conclusion is that 5t is not in the set of rationals. So this seems plausible, right? So if a certain number cannot be written as a ratio, it seems plausible that multiplying that by 5 means we, can no we should still not be able to express that product 5 times the original number as a ratio. But let's be careful. So we've written the assumptions and conclusion. The other step in our proof writing checklist is to remind ourselves of all of the definitions. So we need the definition of the rationals, right? So Q is the set of all ratios P over Q such that P and Q are each integers, so they're in Z. And of course we cannot divide by zero, so the denominator must be non-zero. And then what's the definition of irrational? Well, so we say some number, say x, in the reals is irrational. I'm defining the word irrational, so let me underline that. We say x is irrational if x does not belong to q. Not belong to q, so that means we cannot write it as a ratio. Okay, so now that we have reminded ourselves of these definitions and we've stated the assumptions and conclusion, let's work through the proof and see if it's logically valid. Okay, so the first sentence, we have to be a little careful, the first sentence asks us to suppose 5t is rational. So usually in a proof you start by saying suppose the assumptions and work backwards to the conclusion. But remember that any statement of the form assumptions imply conclusion is logically equivalent to its contrapositive, right? So if we have a statement p implies q, then the contrapositive involves putting nots in front of both and reversing the order. Not q implies not p. This is the contrapositive, so contrapositive. I shall abbreviate a little bit, contrapositive. Okay, so it uh, perhaps is bad manners to start a proof without signaling to the reader that we're proving the contrapositive, but nothing is logically incorrect so far. Uh, it's okay to begin a proof by saying suppose not q, which here q is the conclusion, right? So suppose not the conclusion and then prove not the assumptions, right? So let's just make sure that's what we're doing correctly. Suppose 5t is rational, is that not the conclusion? Indeed, because the conclusion was that 5t is rational, so suppose, or sorry, yeah, the conclusion is that 5t is irrational, so not of that statement is that 5t is rational. Okay, so this is this is assuming assuming not q, so not the conclusion. Okay, so we understand the first sentence. We're going to prove the contrapositive. Next sentence. Then 5t equals p over q, where p and q are integers and q is not equal to 0. Well, that certainly follows because 5t is rational which means 5t belongs to this set q I've written down here. This is the set of all items that can be written as this ratio. So if 5t belongs to that set, then we can write it as such a ratio. So this is from the definition of q. So that's true, this deduction is valid. Therefore, t equals p over 5q. Why is that true? Well, we had 5t equals p over q in the previous sentence, and we can certainly divide both sides of that equation by 5. 
which tells us t is p over 5q. So this is true because we just divide by 5, and that's certainly a logically valid operation to do. We next claim p and 5q are integers. Why is that true? Well, we know that 5q is an integer. Well, we assumed p is an integer. We only have to argue that 5q is an integer, but we know that the product of integers is, an inter is also an integer, right? So product of integers, integers is integer. So you can fill in the rest. 5 times q is also an integer. Why is 5q not equal to 0? Well, that's because q is not e equal to 0. So multiplying both sides by 5, 5q must also not be 0. Then we conclude t is rational. Why is that true? Q t is rational. So to show t is rational, to show it belongs to this set, I need to explicitly write it as a ratio of two integers. Have I done that? Yes, because I've written t equals p over q. So I've given you the, the two integers in the top and bottom, which explicitly shows you that it belongs to this set, because this is the set of all things that can be written as a ratio, and I have written it as a ratio. Therefore, it is one of the objects in that set. So this is you know, the definition of the objects in that set q, and from the assumption t is p over 5q, right? Good. Now we should just back up and ask, what have we done? Well, we assumed not q, which was the opposite of this statement. The opposite of 5t is irrational, is that 5t is rational, so we showed that. And that now we've just concluded that t is rational, but that's exactly not p, since p was that t is irrational, so not p is that t is rational. So we've actually proven not p, which is enough to establish the contrapositive. So we're actually done, and the proof writer just signals this by reminding us, therefore, if t is irrational, then 5t is irrational. And that's simply true because whenever a statement, an implication, is true, it is also necessarily the case that its contrapositive is true. Okay, so actually, yes, uh, the answer to the question, is this correct? Yes, uh, the proof is logically valid because we assumed uh, that the conclusion was false, then showed that the assumptions must have been false, which is logically equivalent to proving that whenever the assumptions are true, the conclusion is true. Good, okay, so again, three lines, but when reading a proof, one must be very careful, go through and check every link in the chain of logical reasoning. And here it turns out that that chain indeed is unbroken.